Hello everybody, my name is Mohit Deshpande, and uh, in this video uh, we're going to be delving a little bit more into optical flow and add a little bit of mathematics to this. So uh, if you recall from the previous video, the point of flow is to find this uh, u and v, and we have two assumptions that we make. And actually, let me take this image and um, expand it out a little bit so you can see it uh, a bit better. So I have two consecutive frames here, and then in the resulting frame so we'll have let's say we we're considering this pixel here in in frame at time t and then this same pixel is over here at the frame at some time t plus delta t and so delta t is the elapsed time so that's what delta t just means also delta just means difference and so this t plus delta t is just means that from this frame a little bit of time has elapsed and now my pixel is in is in a different location so let me start here and then you know it's somewhere like over here ish and so the point of flow like i said in some elapsed time this pixel has moved to the right by some amount that i'm going to call u and then has moved down by some amount that i'm going to call v and so that's what we're trying to find with uh, optical flow. And actually, if I do this, I can complete the triangle. Uh, and so, you know, this is what we're trying to find. We're trying to find this u uh, and this v with with optical flow. So how do we find this u and v? Well, we use mathematics. So I provided an intuitive picture here, but uh, let's actually kind of formalize this picture a little bit. So if you remember at the the first assumption. This is saying that pixel intensities don't rapidly change between consecutive frames. So it's reasonable to say, and I colored it in such a fashion, that these two pixels at different frames have the same pixel intensity. And it's just to remind you, uh, intensity is just when we drop the, um, we're just going to drop any sort of color and we're just going to consider um, pixel intensity. So it's reasonable to say that at these two instances in time, at some t and t plus, uh, t plus this, delta t at this point in time there they the pixels have the same value so actually if we go back to if we use our notation um, our function notation this is saying that the when i the i function applied to this is equal to the i function applied to this so let's actually you know let's write that out a bit more formally so this is so the what is the uh, pixel intensity in this frame well this pixel intensity is i x comma y comma t because this pixel let's say that it's a coordinate x comma y and so now the question is what is the pixel coordinate here in terms of x and y and u and v well this pixel the x coordinate is the same x coordinate here plus this small change uh, u so this is going to be x plus u because because you know to because here, like the x coordinate is like right here, you know, and the x coordinate here is new here, and so then this difference between them, I said, there's x, and then here is x plus u because I'm moving u units in in the right to the right. So this is x plus u, which is why I call it x plus x plus u. And then similarly, if this were y, then this is then y plus v. So in this coordinate is x plus u, y plus v. And so now I can write the this frame as being i, and then the x coordinate of this pixel is x plus u, because I'm at the same, here's the coordinate for the first frame, and here's it for the second frame, and so I'm moving right a u unit, so that's x plus u, and then comma, the what's the y coordinate? It's y which is the same coordinate here plus v because remember here's the initial coordinate in frame t and then in t plus delta t i'm moving down by v and so this is y plus v and so now what's the time well i just told you what it is it's t plus delta t t plus delta t and so now i've written this frame this next frame in terms of this 
uh, in terms of this current frame. And so actually, let me just to just to make this clear. So this is movement in x direction, movement in x, which is what u is, and then v is movement in y direction, in y axis, I should say, and then in x axis. Right, so then these are just a displacement, and then this is movement in time. Movement in time, time axis, so just like the next frame. So that's what these three values represent. And so I can represent these two pixels here, but what is i? i is just a measure of pixel intensity. And what is i here? This is just a measure in pixel intensity as well. And so if you remember from the first assumption that pixel intensities don't rapidly change between two successive frames, these are actually equal. And so this is the optical flow uh, equation here. This is you know, a really important equation, and it's written, it's not quite in a term that we can use uh, quite yet. So this is an important equation. So this is saying that at some time t, the pixel intensity here is equal to the pixel intensity at you know s some time has elapsed between one frame and the next frame and you know we have we can write it in terms of this u and and this v and so just you know take a second and, and look at this equation and make sure that you know it, it logically follows that from our first assumption that these two things uh, should be equal and that the x coordinate of the pixel in this frame is the x-coordinate in this frame plus uh, u, and then y plus v, and then t plus delta t, and so like the position here so that everything, uh, so that this this makes sense. Actually, let me draw these markers as well since I drew it for the x-axis. And so, you know, hopefully this kind of, uh, hopefully this makes sense. If you have any questions, like I said, just feel free to post a comment. But we want to find the values of u and v, but they're in our function. So how can we how do we separate them from our function? And it turns out um, turns out that we actually use calculus to do this. So I'm just going to put dot 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 calculus. I'm just going to put calculus, and I'm just going to write down the final uh, the, the the final equation here, and that is i sub x u plus i sub y v plus i sub t equals zero. So this direct um, this direct conversion from here to here actually uses calculus. So I'm not really going to talk about that um, talk about that at all. But uh, so the these two things I, I will talk about. So we end up with a single equation here and uh, x so so this uh, this i sub x uh, represents how much the frame changes with respect to the x direction horizontally this y is how much uh, y changes or how much the frame changes uh, with respect uh, to the, the y direction so vertically and then i sub t is just the difference between uh, difference between the the is the image difference between the two frames. So how much do the frames change uh, along the time time dimension? And so it turns out that we know this. I'm going to put like a check mark. We can compute this. We can compute this, and we can compute this because it's just an image difference. And then these two things we can actually use convolution to compute. So you know these. So we have. You know this equation of variables, and it turns out that these things, you know, we can we can compute. And so, ah, but we have u and v, but we don't know u and v. So these are two things that we're trying, uh, that we're trying to find. But, you know, we we have one equation, but we have two variables. So how do we solve one equation with two with two variables? Um, this is also related to something called the aperture problem. I'm in case you're curious. Um, about it, but uh, this is 
you know, how do we solve this? But don't worry. It turns out that um, there there is a way to solve this equation. Um, there's an OpenCV uh, has you know ways that we can solve this equation, and the ways that we can approximate u and uh, v. And one particular uh, method that's good is the Lucas Kennedy uh, method, and there's some other ones along with that. There are actually quite a bit that you can use to find u and v. But um, the, to actually find the to actually use that method again requires uh, calculus and linear algebra. So I won't talk about that. But trust me when I say that there are ways that we can we can solve this uh, equation because we're trying to find um, u and v. So there are definitely ways that there are ways that we can solve this. So uh, so don't, so don't worry about don't worry about that. Okay, so. That is, I'm going to stop right here, actually, and uh, in in the next video, there are a couple smaller things with the optical flow that I that I kind of want to wrap up, and um, so I'm just going to do a quick recap here. And so with with optical flow here, we have you know the difference between two frames that we're trying to find this u and this v, which is how much this pixel has moved in the x direction and the y direction, and so we can write down the pixel intensity here. And using the first assumption that the pixel intensities don't change quickly, we can say that these two things are equal. And so now we've written the second frame in terms of the first frame, and we get one equation here. And so you know, to get, remember to get this x plus u is just if I'm I'm defining u as being how much this pixel has moved in the x direction. And so here is the pixel in some frame t, and here's the pixel here's the pixel after some time has elapsed. And I say that the, the difference between this x is u, then this new position must be at x plus u. And similarly, this must be at y plus v if I define v to be how much this pixel has changed in the uh, y direction. And then for this, uh, for time is just delta t, which is some elapsed time has happened between these two frames. And so using the first assumption, we can set these two equal to each other, and then dot 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 calculus. <laughs> And we end up with this single equation, and it turns out that there are three things that we know and we can compute easily, um, but u and v are things that we don't quite know. U and v, at least we've got them out of the function uh, here, but there are things that we don't quite know yet. But at least when they're in this form, we can use calculus and linear algebra to to at least approximate them using several different uh, techniques. So that's kind of a quick uh, overview of of optical flow. And so, like a lot of the techniques are trying to that you'll see in optical flow, try to find these u and v values. And so we're going to be looking at one in particular. Um, but uh, yeah, this is where I'm going to stop right here. And uh, in the in the next video is where I want to kind of wrap up some things with uh, wrap up some things with optical flow. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that wrap up uh, in the next video.